So if you feel you're not getting what you want and you're a storyteller, maybe you're the one that sees something that needs to resurface that you like, or you see something that's not there ever and never been there and you want to destroy the current movement, you want to put it into the passe and this is your critique on it, then you should. Has Hollywood run out of ideas, Peter? No, because you can't run out of human experiences and everybody who's ever born looks at the world in a different way. Why do we hear that so much though? We see it in our comments, we, we hear it all the time. That, that It seems that we've run out of ideas, we're only repeating the same story or IP over and over again. Depends where you look, I mean, I'm sure that it's also a taste thing because some movies get made more, some kind of character or genre, and there's an audience for that. But if we're adventurous, just go on Letterboxd. Like Letterboxd is like the coolest website around or app. And it just has so much exploration for movies and during the pandemic, I created a crime film club where I would curate movies to my friends. And some of them were, you know, in Asia and all around the world. And we, before we hop on a Zoom call, we'd watch one of these movies that I picked. And I used Letterboxd to find them. And every title, I tried to f pick something that was obscure and nobody's seen in the group because there are some cinephiles that are pretty hardcore. So but then it became like a fun challenge. Can I get something that they haven't seen? And I was successful. I, I found multiple movies that like the most hardcore crime film fans didn't ever hear of. And we had an incredible time talking about them. So I think the question is, are the movies that you feel are derivative, maybe it's the type of projects you just don't want to watch? That's fine. What about, you know, the onus is on you because like there's international cinema, there's incredible storytellers on YouTube. There's so many, you know, really interesting points of view or there's podcasts that have, you know, started being created in the audio drama space with stories from, you know, creators that we haven't been introduced to yet, but now they're here in a new medium. So, I think that line about there isn't enough X or whatever, I think that anybody who's commenting on that, they have a point to some degree because maybe they just don't like what's popular, but then they also have the responsibility to seek out what they find interesting. Well, taking it with music, since I know you're, you're a music aficionado, so a lot of people say, oh, well, there's no good music made after the 2000s or whatever. Would you say that they just haven't looked hard enough? That they haven't found some indie bands or different artists that they're they're still in this mindset of what was fed to us through radio back in the day, which has kind of gone away? I mean, maybe there's a band that they like and they broke up, or there was a movement and that isn't the the dominant one. You know, the artists are not pushing in that space, you know, pushing that space or it's not getting a lot of press. I mean, I can't say don't feel bad about the lack of the type of movies or music or, you know, writing that you've seen and, you, and it, you see like it's just a desert, you know, and there's not an abundance of options. I mean, you should mourn that if that's the nostalgic quality. I mean, if you miss a certain type of thing, I get that. I can only speak to myself. Like I can't say this is what the industry is doing or not doing. I could say that when I was looking for movies to entertain very cynical friends of mine who've seen everything and I found things that were very inspiring, that's from my own you know, experience. But if there is specific types of storytellers or stories that you don't see, that's a valid concern. I don't want to deny that. I can only talk about within my own, you know, range of experiences and, you know, what I've seen. But then at the same time, if you don't see what, what's out there and you, it's kind of inspiration maybe 
for you as an artist because now there's more fuel to get you really plugged into a certain type of thing that it, that's missing. In some ways, I think art is kind of like criticism. If you make a movie that is a crime film that is directly uh, diametrically like opposed to what's out there, like if it's all about like 80s action films and then another style comes out that's different or a horror genre starts and it's all meta and that's the thing everything thinks about meta is that there's these different movements and sometimes a new movement upends an old one so if you feel you're not getting what you want and you're a storyteller maybe you're the one that sees something that needs to resurface that you like or you see something that's not there ever and never been there and you want to destroy the current movement you want to put it into the passe and this is your critique on it then you should you should destroy you should in a way it's like you're kind of becoming the next voice that's going to resonate and you might mean that you are in confrontation with the current you know fancy you know filmmaker or author or painter and you're a necessary part of this you know the waves that will happen you know in our culture and then you should bring upon change you should fight to bring upon change because you don't like what's out there and if you're not a creator and you're a critic then you could attack what's out there you know or if you're just a commentator you could comment on this youtube video and that's still a critique of something i mean that's totally fine i don't i don't think it's all or one thing i think it's a confluence of different perspectives yeah, it brings to mind this quote, um, we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. Exactly. So then when we complain that there's no more good movies anymore, there's no good music anymore, we can't, it's all been done before, it's really more on us. It, it's what, it's the filter that we're seeing it through and that maybe that means that we need to tell those stories. Well, I don't think people shouldn't be able to complain about what's out there. I think that's fine. I'm just saying that in some way, if you really don't like a certain way a genre is being explored by the current, you know, fancy people in the space who are getting all the attention, you might come out of left field and completely like ruck shop on it. Like there could be a <laughs> there could be a musician from SoundCloud that says, I hate what these DJs are doing now in, in electronic music. They don't know what's going on. And because of the, the platforms are so much about amplifying anything that gets traction, you might just in your parents' basement make a song that gets attention and now you're challenging what's out there. Or you make a film for no budget, it plays the festivals, and then suddenly people go, oh, it's not about the thing that you don't like. Or if you're, like I said, if you're not a filmmaker, you're just a writer, you just comment on every article you're still there you're still present you're still pushing against something it's okay to not be a fan of what's out there you know i think it's ridiculous if someone's like just smile and consume everything you don't have to you could you could just be annoyed that whatever you're really into is not being like embraced but then you also have the abilities to be a thorn in the side of what's there or potentially be a, a death sentence to that movement that you don't like. And maybe not a death sentence in the sense that it never could get reborn, but literally put it on hold, stop it, and then challenge it with your own voice. Yeah, just be like a mindless consumer. You think that's what they want from us? I don't think anybody wants to be a mindless consumer. And I think that like the idea that there's a Hollywood movie and it's just, you know, doesn't take thinking to make a movie. Nobody who's making a movie is mindless. It's incredibly challenging, you know, task to do that. And there's so many people involved in the process that are brilliant. So I don't think a movie is just mindless. And I do think that a movie's goal is to have some type of reaction. You know, it's not, they don't want an apathetic audience that doesn't feel anything. They're, they're wanting it to like, create an experience that's memorable, or at least not memorable, it makes you forget the challenges 
of your life. So, you know, I don't think that is the idea that you just pour content down somebody's mouth and that's uh and that's what it what the system is it, it doesn't work that way it's it's a there's all it's basically there's all sorts of stories that are being told and some of them are being pushed to front and center some of them are more in the background and as time goes they shift uh based on the what's popular what's you know the new cool you know the new cool voices the new cool distributor you know what's a24 doing it it just keeps shifting you know but it's your job to decide where you're participating in it if you're commenting on it and if you don't want to do anything else you just think that it's bad it's fine too like there's no there's no responsibility for any individual regarding what level of uh, in, you know proximity they have to this uh, culture as a creator or a commentator. Excellent point. So we have free will. Of course, to an extent. And the algorithm doesn't follow us. And well, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it depends on how you um, consume content or movies or comic books or, I mean, like a, there's a spectrum of ex ways that you interact with media. Is it physical? Is it you're super nostalgic and you get DVDs and VHS? Are you getting them off Netflix? Are you getting them off Criterion? I just don't think there's like a one size fits all for anybody. And there isn't like just some psychographics that defines a giant chunk where everyone's like, all you do is watch these videos. Be because that's not true. I mean, I listen to certain types of podcasts, uh, watch certain kinds of movies, read certain kinds of journalism. Like, I'm a very specific in that way. And there's other people that will be all about watching video games on YouTube or somebody's all about food. I think that like, there's this idea that like, there's the death of uh, what we of what we love or there's nothing here. Or, I do think that there's ways that journalists sometimes will create an absolute. Like they'll say it's like. So I think they're creating the, and sometimes not all of them, obviously, but some of them have like a frame that's convenient because it invokes conversation. So it's like, how do I, st how do I say something that's bombastic that gets you t talking? I mean, I know for a little while, uh, years ago, they were saying horror movies are dead. That was like an article. There was a few bombs or whatever, horror movies are dead. And then I was like, how's that true when the world at times is horrific, when the human experience could just be terrifying and confusing. How could horror movies be dead yet we need an outlet to comment on this complex nature of our mortality? So there's no way, but at the same time, the journalists maybe just want people to talk about we're sick of schlocky horror movies and maybe that's the protest, that's the, the writing, that's fine. But I just think that these type of frames on the grand scheme, as much as they're conversation starters, if you take them too seriously, they're also limiting.